Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Hey guys, welcome back to Spy Kai. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again, taking a look at um, doing like some kind of custom, like hand drawn font style kind of thing. And I thought this would be a really a nice thing to do because a lot of people have been asking for uh, drawing stuff lately, and uh, I want to mix this together with like some kind of font face topography kind of thing. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to be going down and breaking down a couple of things that I'm doing. First off, you can see I'm kind of starting, um, with kind of big shapes. I, I, I'm, I'm trying not to draw small. I'm trying to draw kind of, kind of big. And I'm just, at this point, I'm just getting an idea down. Um, and I know that I'm, I'm trying to make the word crest. Um, so the funny thing is, is that typically when I do these like font logo things, uh, they're usually not drawn. I don't do a lot of drawn, like hand-drawn logos and things like this. But when I do, uh, it's always so much fun because the easy thing is is that you can sketch in whatever size you really want to, um, because you can just scale the, the 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 image up. You can just scale that layer up. So right now, I think I'm working in 5,000 by 5,000. I think actually. So the reason I'm working in such a big canvas is because, like I said, you always want to draw in a big size. Um, you guys should know this by now. Um, but the even bigger reason is because, as you can see, I'm not really filling up the entire canvas um, because I need padding on the top left, right, and bottom of all of the logo because I don't want it to be right up against the edge. So you'll see once I'm done with the sketch here, uh, I will definitely be scaling this, this sketch up because it doesn't matter because I'm just going to do a line on over it anyway. Um, now. As you can see, what I'm trying to keep in mind is I'm trying to have a flow. And what I mean by a flow is uh, you can see how some of the letters kind of run into each other. Not, not necessarily run into each other, but what's the word I'm looking for? They kind of continue even though the letter has stopped. So for instance, the S kind of goes into the T and, and the T kind of curves. I, I want this to be very dynamic. So try and think of the letter in the way of, well, how can I fill up this empty space? What can I do to this letter to make sure it fills up the empty space? That's what I'm kind of going for. I don't want there to be too much empty space in between the letters. Um, I want to kind of fill all of that area. Um, and I don't want things to be too thin either. I want these letters to be really bold. Um, once again, filling in that space underneath the, underneath the S because there's too much space underneath the S there. Um, and now you can see right there, you see now I'm, I'm scaling this this up because I know that's way too small and I can now scale it because we don't have to worry about the quality of the sketch layer because it's just going to be a sketch layer. I'm just going to do the line out over it like I'm doing right now. I added a layer over top of my sketch and now I just dropped the opacity of the sketch and now I'm going and do the line art. As you can see, I'm going to actually put some nicks and some scrapes into the line art here. Um, and this is further to, this is to, to further accentuate the detail that I, that I really want. And I love simplistic things. As you guys should know this by now, I love doing um, a few, very few things to art or anything to get the point across and instead of making like this super grungy texture over top of it and making it look all nice with shading and whatever i don't like the way it looks like i'll do that sometimes depending on what it is but for the most part i really enjoy a simple like minimalistic kind of just flat graphic art style and with these little scrapes it's so easy to get so much detail in there but you don't want to overdo it i actually overdo it here on the e and I actually get rid of a couple of these pieces it starts looking like fur or fuzz from like a cheetah or something but i have to get rid of a couple of them but don't go overboard it's very easy to go overboard with things like this because it looks so good you're like i should add more i should add more of these but then you realize that you don't need that many and it still looks good so there you go i get rid of some of those um but uh but yeah so like i said once again you kind of want to just be creative with it art is just a creative process and people always ask me um like to make tutorials on art and everything like that and i do i try my best to make tutorials that i believe would actually help other than hey just do this um because that's really what it is i mean i'm not there's no like there's not like a secret to it i'm just kind of just going with going with my heart as it were you know and just putting lines where i think lines will look good and here goes my kind of um I guess this is part of my style. I just do like the, we've talked about this before in, in detail, but I do like this double line art style. So I kind of just put lines in some places where I want to accentuate detail. And I really love the way that it looks. I'm doing it again here as, as always. I always do it. Um, it's, it's really become my thing, you know? Um, so yeah, it's just really, it, it's really a great way to add detail. And I just like the way that it looks. I'm glad I came up with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I added a couple dots in there as well for some added accentuation. And you can see just like when I add little nicks, I'm adding nicks 
in two different ways. So I'm adding them just to break up long lines. And I'm also doing it at an intersection. So you can see where the T connects like the, the stick for the top of the T and the, and the, the stick that goes down. I kind of create a little nick there and I actually push out um, and have a little lip over top of, I guess you want to call it a lip over top of the little cut there. And it just adds a little bit more detail there as well. I just really enjoy that. It looks really good. Now I'm adding a couple of pieces in here that I'm going to, that I'm, uh, going to get rid of in the future. Um, cause I wanted to fill out those, those dead areas, those blank spaces, but then I realized that I don't need them and I don't, I don't really want them there. Cause they're just kind of distracting from the letters, which is what I want to what your, your attention to focus on. Um, I'm going to head and I colored everything in. And now we're going to go ahead and do some, um, some, uh, I, tr I tried messing with kind of like a uh, drop shadow like thing. Didn't like it. So I got rid of it once again. It took away from the flat graphic aspect. It looked, it looked a little bit too 3d and I, I just wasn't enjoying it. Um, I really wanted it to be quite flat and this like drop shadow effect, which would be very nice in some specific situations kind of just took away from that. Um, I decided that I didn't really want to do color like that. So I dropped the color of the background so I can see like a little bit more neutral of a color and then I wanted to make the outline white, which I really enjoy. Um, so I'm going to have like alternates of this logo and one's going to be like this with the white and the black and then one's going to have color. Um, but I really wanted color in this because I wanted to do some shading and you can't really like highlight black and white. You, you can't really do it because if you choose a dark color, it's going to blend in with the black. If you choose a white, a light color, it's going to blend in with the white. So I went ahead and changed it back, added a little bit of highlights here. So now with highlights, lighting is always a hot topic because um, a lot of the times people don't know where they should highlight or where they shouldn't highlight. Essentially, imagine there is like, you know what the sun is. Everyone knows what the sun is, right? Unless you live on Mars. And then even still, you know what the sun is because, I mean, the Mars isn't exclusive to Earth, all right? So this, this, imagine the sun's coming from the top right-hand corner of the canvas, and then it's shining down onto the letters. Imagine where every single place the light would be hitting. And then I added a couple of other lines just for, you know, detail. Um, like some of those ones in the back of the E. They probably wouldn't be there, but that's, that's the art style, so that's fine. But you see the bulk of the light is coming from the top right-hand side or somewhere around that area. Um, on any line that is facing the right-hand side of the canvas is where I put some um, some light, as you can see. And then I also do a secondary light, which is um, which would, I guess, can be considered a rim light, but I, I like calling it an ambient light. Um, so this is more often uh, a secondary light, or, 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 or more importantly, it's an ambient light. So light reflecting off of the water, light reflecting off of the ground, off of concrete, off of whatever, just to give a nice vibe that there was something else there other than sunlight. Plus it adds some detail. I do this a lot. I did this in the supernatural speed art that I just made recently. There is a light coming off of them from the right hand side where it is blue, which is supposed to indicate like a moonlight or something else that isn't a direct um, harsh light. And this is the same thing. As you can see, I just kind of duplicate. I get rid of this because I don't like it because it's too much shading, but um, uh, I just duplicated both the highlight and the ambient light and then blurred them um, and turned one white and one black to give it like a shadow effect. Didn't like it, so I got rid of it once again. Um, same thing with those little lines I just added. I was trying to, I was trying something, you know, you got to do things sometimes as an artist just to see what's going to be like. Um, I ultimately decided to change the color from blue because I feel like I do too many things that are blue, so I changed it to this nice like maroonish red. Um, and it had a really, really gorgeous blue, um, like seafoam light. And then I did decide to go ahead and add some um, highlights in what I would like to call like Lomo lights, I suppose, Lomo lights, which is just black and white colors overlaid onto the um, onto the art. And then I did some shine as well, which is just white overlaid uh, and dropped the opacity down. Really, really enjoyed this. I, I think it's very cool. Um, played around with some different colors, but I think ultimately I went back to the uh, orange, uh, the the red at the end. So I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it. That is going to be it for today. Um, that's my process of creating like a text topography kind of thing. I'll see you in the next one. Um, but until then, bye-bye.